Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video, a new series of PAN, Philips Android News, in which I will tell you the hottest new shit from the past month that affects us Android developers, yeah, in regards to new Android libraries, new versions, new Kotlin updates, all that stuff that affects us in our everyday work life. Let's jump right into it. The first big change from February 2022 is that Jetpack Compose is now stable in its version 1.1. So what are all the changes here for Jetpack Compose 1.1? On the one hand, they implemented image vector caching. And what that means is it basically improves the performance of the painter resource composable that we used for images. If you simply wanted to include a resource from your RAS package in your image composable and display that basically. So they now cache that image to improve the performance of that image composable. The next change was that the Google team actually changed the touch target sizing. What does that mean? So for the material components in Jetpack Compose, such as, such as radio buttons, normal buttons and all that stuff, there is no some kind of default value for the touch area. So even if you try to make your composable smaller than it actually would be by default, then it will now rather occupy that default space to make sure that you actually keep that usability so the user has enough space and, and a big enough area to tap on. And there's still an option if you want to really force that to have a smaller button, a smaller radio button with a smaller touch area than by default, but that's not recommended anymore. So they actually just increase the uh, usability by default there a little bit. And the third big change here, which I really like and which I really was looking forward to, and that is that lazy column and lazy row items can now be animated. So each item separately with a new modifier, which is called animate item placement. We can simply use that to have our very own tween, our very own spring animation that we use to, on the one hand, animate these items when they compose, but on the other hand, also to animate these when the list actually changes. And all you need to do for that is to simply provide a key to your items block that just uh, helps your lazy column to identify each item to just give it a unique key. And that way you can make sure that your items will be also properly animated when they are, for example, shuffling or when they just change, when you reorder your list basically. And that looks a lot better and you have a lot a lot of options here to actually um, yeah, to choose your very own animation for that. I will link all the sources down below, by the way. So if you want to dive deeper into this stuff, then yeah, check these out. Next up, we have a very cool update as well. And that is that the first preview of Android 13 is actually out. So another new Android version. And uh, yeah, there's a preview. You can already download that and flash it on your Pixel device, which I'm thinking about. To, to do that on my pixel. But let's actually go through the major changes that uh, that are contained in that preview version of Android 13. So overall, they really focus on uh, improving privacy and security here with that update. So they, for example, have a new photo picker that you can then implement in your app. So a native Android photo picker, you can say, so no external app for that, which they say should increase privacy. So you should in, in future you choose Google's photo pick off to basically let your users select photos in your app. I don't know yet how that differs from Google Photos, from the Google Photos app, for example, which is pre-installed on, I think at least Google devices. Not sure if on all Android devices, um, which, which you can also use to, to pick photos. But I think it's just a little bit more usable way for your users to pick that because it really focuses on, on picking photos and videos. Then we have a change that there is a new permission that you will be able to use and that you sometimes have to use and that is new by Wi-Fi devices which is actually a cool thing because uh, right now if you actually scan your area for um, devices like in your Wi-Fi network if you want to connect with other devices in your Wi-Fi network you actually also need location permission because you could theoretically also gain location information with that. And very often apps don't need to actually access a location. They just want to scan for Wi-Fi devices or yeah, devices nearby. 
and they still needed to have that location permission which wasn't cool right now um, with this update the google team actually changed that so there's a new permission to just scan for these devices and to just connect with uh, nearby devices in your wi-fi network without actually needing uh, location permission for that the next change is one that i really like and that i actually i'm looking forward to and that is a so-called quick settings api what is that so right now there are many scenarios where your app actually needs the user to change some Android settings. So in the normal Android settings app, so they need to leave your app, need to change some settings and then get back to your app. For example, if yeah, if they should toggle whether, it, uh, whether your app is allowed to draw over other apps or so. And the typical way to do this right now is to just uh, send out an intent and that intent then opens the settings app the user changes that setting needs to go back to your app and then they are good to go however with this new quick settings api they can do this without actually leaving your app so a little pop-up will open up with just the setting that you want the user to change and they can do it without actually leaving your app which i think is a great way to improve usability and also to keep users in your app next up they will also improve the themed app icons which i actually already have on android 12 on my pixel 6 but i think they will further improve that so basically what themed app icons are it's um, a new way to actually or new style for your app icons on your home launcher that will basically adapt to the background you chose for your android device so that your icons will all fit to the background so i for example have a green matrix background and yeah my icons are very fitting to that to have a very cool android theme another change will be that there will be an easier language selection just for specific apps so if you have an app that uh, the user should have a specific language too without changing the default device language then that will be also easier in future they will have a new locale manager for that and one more change that i found interesting here is that in future they actually plan to make parts of android updates or like android updates in, in total be downloadable downloadable from google play so for example if they have that new feature of this new google photo picker then you will be able to download this from Google Play to your phone. So as far as I understood this is that there will be single features you can then decide to download from Google Play or not. So this will not be done anymore from the Android settings as far as I understand. Maybe I'm wrong here, uh, but that also sounds like a pretty solid approach here. And yeah, there are some more minor changes that I didn't mention here. If you want to dive into these, then you, you will find the source down below. The next news is a new Jetpack Compose library that just got out in February, which is a really cool one, which will affect a lot of developers in future. And that is called Maps Compose. So we can now use Google Maps in combination with Jetpack Compose. Till now, that was only possible by using the Android View Composable, so that we just use the normal um, Google Map View in Compose with the Android view yeah, migration composable, you can say, which wasn't cool. Like uh, if you can avoid using that, then I would. Now we have a Google map composable, which handles all that stuff a lot easier. I actually also already uploaded a video about that last Sunday. So if you want to learn how you can actually make a cool parking spot finder app with the new maps compose library, then you want to click up here somewhere where I will link this, which is definitely worth watching. So we'll build a parking spot finder app where you can mark, hey, that's where I actually parked my car. It will save that in a database and then we'll show all that markers on a Compose map. Overall, it feels a lot better than using the Android view composable in combination with a Google Maps view. However, there are still some things that don't feel that Compose-ish right now. So for example, we have these markers where we can set info windows. So just that a little info window pop up. And to, to let that info window pop up, we need to basically say marker.show info window, which is not really the compose way. So I would expect that we have some kind of um, Boolean value, whether that info window is visible or not. But that's something that, yeah, for sure will come in future, or I guess. I, I wouldn't know why they would mix up this um, declarative approach with the old approach of XML 
but it is a really good start. And the fourth news here that I think is worth mentioning is that there is a new plugin version of the KMM plugin that got out, which is 0.3.1 actually. And yeah, not too many new features are contained in that, but uh, yeah, they actually focus on fixing bugs, improving stability, which is the biggest issue of KMM right now, in my opinion. So I'm really welcoming, welcoming that update. I haven't tried it out yet if it's easier to deal with, uh, but it uh, seemed to be a major update. I'm really hyped where all this stuff with Android and Kotlin is going in the future, especially KMM which I'm really looking forward to, so I hope it will be more stable soon, so I can also make some videos about it. If you actually missed the previous Android news, which I actually publish here every single month, then you can simply click here to watch the old news from January.